Thank you for supporting our channel. Thank you for supporting Wizan. Please like, subscribe, comment, and hit the notification bell for any future videos. I'm married and I've still got my own name. Ah, oh, no. Doesn't it? I sound like my mum. <laughs> <laughs> You're joking. <laughs>
I read that in Jane's script. That kind of made me go, oh, ooh, hang mm. on a second, I like this. Hang on, because this is relatable to me. Yeah. Um, so that's what I was saying, going back to the saying of, of nobody... Nobody, fails. Give, fails. nobody fails the knowledge, nobody. they just give up. Yeah. For me, you know, I've listened to the stories of my mum going through the knowledge of my dad yeah. and how hard work it was. So going back to what I was saying was, you know, as a partner for somebody who's doing the knowledge, it's, that sometimes it can get really frustrating to keep the passion going and to keep yeah. them going out and doing the yeah. runs and to keep them on the bike all weather, all year round. So for me, that line is one of those lines that I think every knowledge partner... Yeah. Has probably had in their vocabulary. Well, you might be very inspirational because one of the things that tends to happen that I see more often is that the partners are not very helpful. Mm. So, um, and I tell my students when they we used to do an induction and they'd come in, and my standard sort of joke was that, look, if you can explain to your partner how serious this is, if you can tell them that your focus needs to be here and you're not going to be able to just run to Tesco's and take them out for holidays or everything. Your focus is going to be on this. And the quicker you get this done, mm. the quicker you can get divorced and find someone you really love. <laughs> <laughs> and for so many of them, it's true. Yeah, I mean, sad though, really sad. <laughs> but it is because it's such a lovely journey to go on and ultimately... If you support them. Of course, yeah. but ultimately that's going to be for both of you and that's going to be for your family. And that's going to mm. be... So I don't see why partners nowadays aren't supporting when it comes to knowledge. I know it takes a long time and I know, you know, it's difficult with money and work in between, but ultimately it's for an end goal for you both and for yeah. a family. Mm. So for me, I, I think that's really sad to think mm. that there's unsupported partners out there. Oh, there's plenty. Well, I think, I mean, so when Lewis, um, so Lewis had started doing the knowledge in his 20s and then his acting was getting quite busy, so he stopped it, but it was always something that he wanted to go back and do. And... He absolutely loved studying the knowledge. He enjoyed the whole process. Um, and when, I can't remember the year now, but when, so I we'd, were living in Camden and I was giving up because I was acting as well um, and performing and I decided that I was going to give that up and I was going to sort of focus on directing. Um, and then Lewis was like, you know, I, I think I should go back and do the knowledge. And... Because it's something that it's one of the few jobs that really is you can have freedom. Because yeah. even other self-employed jobs, like for example, if you're a carpenter or an electrician, mm -hmm. you might still have other people working for you. So you've got that responsibility, yeah. or you've got clients. You've got to go and do that job that day because you promise them they'll do it. But with what I what I love about you know. Lewis being a black cab driver and when he's not acting is the fact that actually you might just get a day where you think, well, actually, I've got a, we want to go here. Yeah, I haven't got to answer to anybody apart from mm. myself. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. And like you said, for actors, I mean, it's the ideal job, really, because you can you get an audition. You haven't got to try and get time off work. No. Mm. You can even drive to the audition, get changed in the back, have a little <laughs> kit. <laughs> you know, and for me as a director, it's been great because... You've got so much space in the back there. I'm often in like the back using it as an office. Yeah. When we're driving around or you can put camera equipment in there and all that stuff. Yes. Um, it's perfect. But I didn't even know anything. I'm from South End originally. And when I first heard about the knowledge, I was 18. I'd moved to London. I was living in Bayswater um, at the first Butlins Hotel. Oh, yes. Um, which was, I think, Prince's Square near Whiteley's. I think there was a couple. I think there was one. But it was yeah. only there for about three year, three or four years. And we used to have big red buses that we would drive, do tours of London for the um, people staying in the hotel. And one day I was doing a tour and I didn't really know what I was doing. I was going, oh, yeah, that's the church of the Bow Bells over there. <laughs> and this guy came up to me and he went, no, it's not. <laughs> it's a Methodist church. And he went... I know I'm doing the knowledge at the moment, and I was like, it was some like religious thing. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing, and I didn't know anything. that was the first time I'd heard about the knowledge. And then yeah. I was doing a play, and one of the actors after the play, he was like, "Oh, I can't stop. I'm I'm, I'm on my twenty ones." <laughs> <laughs> and then he was. Then they explained to me what it, yeah, you know, the whole thing. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's it, yeah, it's and it's it becomes. I think you know to be a partner of someone who's doing mm. the knowledge. You really have to support them, yeah, 
And I mean, I literally, when Lewis said about doing it, I said, well, how long is it going to take? He said, oh, you know, anything from two years to 10 years. Mm. And then I thought, do you know what? That time is going to pass anyway. Yeah. So if you start today, you're one step, closer. step by step. That's yeah. one of the songs in our film. Um, you're one step closer. Because that time's going to pass anyway. It's true. People don't see it, do they? Mm. I mean, when we had a guy in today, he said, his dad asked him to do the knowledge with him when he was 18. And when you're 18, you just you just don't see the world. You just can't see mm. the wood for the trees. And he, if he had done it, and we all dream about it now, if I'd have done it when I was 18, yeah. you'd be 20 and you'd be driving a cab. Might be dangerous, mind you. You'd have too much money for a 20-year-old on a regular basis. <laughs> Might be too much. Um, and the thing about people who also procrastinate a little bit too much, I did the knowledge with my friend Stephen Gardner, and when he did it, He's always saying to me, I'm doing it so that I can learn to play the drums. I want to be in a band. He, he passed that, became a cab driver. He still drives a cab every single day now. That's 30 years ago. He never tapped a single drum and never <laughs> followed anything <laughs> from it, you know. <laughs> so it was like, mm, you've got to move on and do stuff. So, Jane, you was an actress as well. Yeah. What have you done that um, – I might have seen. Oh, nothing exciting. You know, I done, <laughs> <laughs> I done bits and bobs and I was a dancer as well. I was in a band for 15 years. Um, done lots of theatre. That's how I met Lewis. Um, yeah, so nothing oh. you would have seen, I'm sure. Okay. Well, I don't know. Nothing I mean, that I could talk about. <laughs> we're lovies, aren't we? We're they lovies. were lovies, We yes. love each other. We, yeah. we, you know, it's, it's hard, ain't it? When you're not in it, it's yeah. difficult. And people are like, oh, no, I don't like that. Oh. But actually, you know what? It's all just a big game of lovely mates and working with lovely people yeah. and enjoying it. And, you know, you slip into crews and slip out of crews of people. So, you know, yeah. it is. Are you from one yeah. of the famous acting schools, Shana? Actually, me and Jane went to the same drama school. We went to Anna Shares. Anna Shares? Yeah, yeah the prestigious Annas. Wow. Yeah. So are you an East End girl or an Islington girl? I'm an Islington girl. Okay. Um, I grew up around Anna, as to be honest. We grew up being very mischievous in the park opposite, mm -hmm. um, which actually isn't where I now work. So I feel like I've done a full circle and back to my home turf again. Um, but, Anna, I mean, Anna's is great. Well, I mean, it just really is. My brother went Anna's, and for me, it was more of the buzz of what was going on with my brother and his mates and it was really cool and there was yeah. going bananas and they were doing improvs and they were putting these shows on and I was going, what's going on? I want a bit of this. Yeah. And then you do and it was one of those things that was never really took seriously and I don't think Anna's really does take themselves seriously mm. and that's what I love about it. And for me, it was it started off as a get me off the street and you pay £2.50 and you go in. And oh, brilliant. But then it turned into something that actually I was really enjoying. Yeah. You know, it's a confidence build and I was there at the age of 12 and... You're making friends and it becomes your routine. And actually, I really fell in love with drama and, and, and doing it a bit more professionally than what all my other mates were doing. Mm. Um, so it's really lovely now working with people like Jane because Jane really was my, my peer, really, at Anna's. Not that I really... We no. didn't really mix with each other. I mean, I don't really no, remember I'm you at old, Anna's. A yeah. little bit old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, it, for now, I always say it's really nice because I feel like we have the same ethos because yeah. we've come from the same drama school. Yeah. So it's really lovely working with Jane, yeah. um, knowing that we've kind of got the same background. Yeah. Mm. I mean, Shana is incredible as a, an mm, actress. Yeah, no, she really is. I think she is one of the, well <laughs> I, I, don't want, I don't want to say the best actress in the <laughs> country, but she you wait to wait till you see her in this film. Oh I saw as I said, I and I was I am not joking. I do not uh if I didn't think it was good I would come somewhere like this neutrality of mm -hmm. like oh yeah it's very good to film like that. I honestly have never seen better acting for the accent for me to relate to as if it was in the street hearing people speak that's, was... That's but that's, I, that's, that's a lot a down to you, though. I always say that's down to Jane's writing. Mm -hmm. You really hit the nail on the head and a lot of the dialogue in it is just real natural flowing dialogue that you would be having with your partner, mm. whether you're really pissed off of each other or you're lagging or, you know, you're having a really lovely special moment with each other. Jane really just hits those moments and those marks. And for me, it's the writing, that it's the language and it's real. And, and yeah. actually, sometimes I think because I have got such a, a cockney vibe about me, you do stuff and you read scripts and none of it really flows off your tongue as much as 
when I read Jane's scripts and I think, oh, bloody hell, she's got it so... And because you have, you understand the vocabulary yeah, as well. well so truly, yeah, 100%. That might I be think, why it's so, that's yeah. why it's worked, because you mm. understand how we say these things. Mm. Whereas an actress that might be from Manchester who's acting in an East End accent and then putting on doesn't mm. understand how we say these things. Look, we're all from the same place. We've grown up in the, around the same areas. Like, like I said, Lewis is a cabbie. My dad was a cabbie. There's so many things... Mm. that me and Jane have got in common, yeah. but actually, now talking about it, you realise that's yeah. probably why we work so well together. Yeah, mm. definitely. Um, I think, I mean, the character that Shana plays in it, I, as I, said, I wrote it in 2010, so at that time, Shana would have... Been 10 years old. No, I wished. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd have been so I didn't, 20. I didn't write it initially with her in mind, because she would have been, at that point she would have been too young to play the character, but then when I got it back out in two thousand and nineteen, I was just like, "Oh, this is." You knew it was for her. I knew it was for her. Yeah. So, so she I, plays the lead love interest. She plays the lead love interest. So they're a couple. So the difference with this love story, I think, within with lots of film scripts with um, love stories, it's you see the couple meeting, or it's when they're separating. Whereas when we meet Sophie and Paul. They've already been together. They're married. Mm. They're a young They're married established couple. Yet. You're in the you know all the airs and graces and all the <laughs> real love there. But it's a it's and I just that was the that was the key to create a a relationship that I hope people can really identify yeah. with. And Am I going to cry when I see it? Well, we'll wait. You'll, 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 and um, Niall, who plays. Shana's husband, who is a singer-songwriter who wrote most of the songs in the film and sings them live yeah. in the film. Um, it was so important to get that casting right and believable. And yeah. I think that, you know, their chemistry is so good on screen that you, you know, completely believe that they could be yeah. a couple. And, and Niall is, is Irish. Niall's Irish. In the, and in the film he's Irish, obviously, and, so... Yeah. Uh, he's Irish in real life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Around. He might be like a really, really good actor. I don't know. He's but, yeah, great he's, at accents, yeah. but no, that is his natural accent. And I thought that was beautiful because, again, it's, it might be making it's it a work real better. Yeah. North London story. Yes. Starts in Camden. And, you know, there's, as we know, many um, Irish people in North London. Well, in London. Yeah. Um, and I think it gives it a nice balance with the two, the yeah. two accents. I'll have to be careful when when I watch films with my children. They they say, "Daddy, is it is it American film? Is it English or French?" And for them, an American film has a happy ending. Mm -hmm. English films, we don't know. <laughs> French French films, gonna someone's gonna die. So she's like, they don't want to watch it. French ending, we don't want it, Daddy. Don't want it. <laughs> they really cry easily. I love French cinema. <laughs> yes, I, we were talking about it just a minute ago about French cinema. There was a horror movie made years ago where the man kidnaps people from a service station and he buries them in the garden alive. Oh. The Americans remade it. And uh, in the French version, he buries them in the garden alive and they die. Go on, what's the happy ending with the Americans? I, I never watched it because I couldn't watch it. There's a happy ending. They get out. They escape. They're buried they alive in the garden. Out. So, yeah, the American no, films, no, no, happy no, endings. Happy. happy endings and French films, terrible endings. <laughs> and English films, we can go either way. Your uh, brother is Joe Swash. Mm, yes. And uh, so you're both mockneys, really. You're not really, you know. So I have to diss it a little bit. You, you kind of, for me, people from Islington are... Posh and rich. No, but you know what? I always say that Islington is so half and half. You have the poor living on the doorstep of the rich in Islington. But so that's for me, that's why I love Islington is that there's that real contrast yes. and everybody just gets on no matter what you got and what you don't got. Um, mm. So I class myself as a real cook. Well, you, you can much. after that don't got paraphrase. <laughs> <laughs> the grammar's going to go like. <laughs> can I ask you a question? Oh, yeah, sure. So I keep reading on Twitter that this. Um, this year is 200 years of the knowledge. Is that correct? And then I'm is seeing really? people say, well, no, it's been going 400 years. And then I read yesterday that I think it was a TFL tweet that said on the 23rd of April, which is the day of our screening, mm. um, it's the day that they gave the first 200 years ago when they gave the first licence. OK, I left it. I was at the last ceremony that we celebrated uh, an anniversary and I think that was 20-something years ago. So I don't know what this one would be, to be honest. They're um, saying 200 years of the knowledge. Yeah, so 200 years of the modern knowledge, maybe. 
um, the so. history of the knowledge goes back to the Ale- not the Alexander Pest, Crystal 400 Palace. Four hundred years, isn't it? Yes. So no, four hundred years. Is it? Seemed a long time ago. Oh. Um, did so they have ma- electric cabs back then? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, so maybe I don't know. I'll have to check yeah, it out for you, check. Jane. We actually have so just a little another plug here for the sure. film. We have um, a beautiful song in the film called "The Knowledge." Mm. Are all the songs original? Yeah. They are. Wow. And it's not, is it a music or the songs just play? It's a music drama. So the character that Niall plays, Paul, he's a musician. So in the film, as the character, uh, he's playing the music. It's a bit like the jazz singer. where the, the, yeah, the, that, kind of, that kind of thing. The musician's playing the songs as they yeah. go. Um, so it's part of his character playing the music. Mm. And it's called The Knowledge, one of the songs that he's and it's absolutely beautiful and it's going to be released in June when the film comes out at the cinemas. Wow. Okay. So at the cinemas, 9th of June. Always at the cinema. Netflix. Are you going to move to Netflix and So hopefully that after the theatrical release then. Yep. But we wanted it to be in the cinemas and for people to see it on the big screen. Yeah. Because you can't you can't beat that. I mean we were in Manchester a couple of weeks ago, weren't we? Mm-hmm. Out, and watching it on a massive screen as part of the Manchester Film Festival. That was the world premiere. And it won Best UK British No Film. way. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you must be stoked. Really happy. Yeah. Yeah. Over the moon. Yeah. Is this the first really movie happy. you've produced or you've done others? No, so I didn't produce it. So Karen Newman okay. produced it. Um, so prior to this, like we, Shana and I worked together on a film eight years ago now oh. called My Feral Heart, which was a, a feature film shot in Essex. Um, so yeah, so I just directed that. So I'll have to watch that as well now. Yep. Can I get it on Netflix or Prime um, or anything? I think it could be. It's been on the BBC four times. Um, that doesn't answer your question. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's on the BBC um, for player. It's on one. It's on. Ah, it's on yeah, I'm sure it's it called is. My Feral Heart, and you'll see Shana in there in that as well. She's brilliant. When she's much that. younger. Was it stop with eight years? Well, no, she was. She said nine years ago. No, it was, but I don't feel like I'm old enough to do something eight years ago. No, she doesn't look any different. (laughs) (laughs) She doesn't look any different. (laughs) Only joking. (laughs) Well, I'm just going to say it's really lovely being here because I said when I came in, didn't I, Jane, that this could have been my life doing the knowledge. You would have done it. I would have done the knowledge. Yeah, I would have. It was one of those things. My dad died. when we was really young, and he was a cab driver, and like we said earlier, I think once you have a cab driver in your family, that's it. Yeah. It's cabbies for life, ain't it? Um, and it was just one of those things that either me and my brother was always going to do. Um, Joe did. Uh, Joe attempted to go and do the knowledge, but then ended up getting EastEnders all those years ago, yeah. and then kind of got sidetracked. And then I was like, "Come on, Sean, pull your socks up. You can do this. Let's do it for Daddy and go and do yeah. the knowledge." And like exactly for all the amazing reasons we just spoke about. Yeah. Um, but again, life got in, in the way and b- different jobs and different bits and bobs. So actually coming in here today is uh, one of those moments when you really yeah. think, oh God, this could have been my life. Mm. Sat in here and doing me points. And so, yeah, it's a funny old one. Yeah, well, Joe would have been a great cab driver. He would have been a stereotypical Islington cab driver. Yeah, would have non-stop chat your yeah. off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd have to get out. I can't talk to the cab. I'm getting out. <laughs> but again, I think, isn't that brilliant for an actor? I think... To be meeting people every day from all walks of life, mm-hmm. that's what you want. I mean, mm. isn't it? To, for your, for your craft. Well, it'd be quite interesting as well if you sort of had a, a fairly successful acting career and you're also driving your cab, because it can be fun driving your cab. And then you, you, people getting in the back saying, I think I recognise you. Rather than the other way around, going, hang on, I recognise you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going yeah. to the cab, yeah, hang on, yeah, I recognise yeah. you. Yeah. And there's a guy on YouTube, a cab driver, the gentleman cabbie. And I, I've subscribed to him and he's got some good videos and it's really surprising how few views he's got. But he does uh, interviews with anybody who gets in the cab who's mm. famous. Mm. And he's had some really great people in there and they, they get like 1,000 views, these videos. You think, this, this is really interesting mm. stuff. So I'm really shocked because there's another cab driver, Tom the taxi driver. He's very popular and he's doing very good. Um, and I like him too. But this gentleman cabby doing these interviews in the back of the cab. Mm. So you'd jump in and it's, he'd recognise yeah. you. I wouldn't recognise anybody. It would have been interesting to see you do the knowledge, but you you now are just acting or you have another job to keep you afloat? No, I recently, my my partner's a joiner, um, and as, as I'm saying this as I'm sipping on a cup of coffee, <laughs> for years I've had this real love and fancy for having a coffee shop or doing something with a little coffee shop. So just after lockdown happened, 
it was a real great opportunity to again pull my socks up and go yeah. right come on what, what do we wanna, what do we want to do work dried up and where can I go how can we turn the a negative into a positive and we ended up buying a, a little trailer and my partner did it up and we've got a really lovely little coffee shop oh, now nice. in my local park in the one that I used to be a very mischievous teenager <laughs> in um Barnsby Park in Islington so come down and have a cup of coffee okay I do that um but again I'm loving it and it's just one of those things like it's obviously not the same lines as being a cabbie but it's one of those things that you work for yourself it's your own thing mm. you can come and go as you please and it's the freedom um and i'm absolutely loving it so yeah. you know i can take the time off it's when good. i want to it's the speculation as well you know we, we're speculating on a bit more success other than the mundane of i go to work i come home i'm paid a wage doesn't seem to work doesn't work for me no and i think people are starting to realize that now and people aren't enjoying that and we've got big massive corporate companies that you know people have been working for for years and actually ultimately you're a minute something in such a big cog of wheels yeah. and you're not feeling the love. And these are now why people are sort of branching out and doing what they've always wanted to do, but haven't had the balls to do it. Yeah. And I think, and again, like with COVID, um, it was a catch 22 because yeah, it was a real sad, depressing time for a lot of people, but actually it give people a kick up the arse yeah. and go, right, hang on a sec. I need to get myself out of this now and we need to sort of earn a bit of money and we need to do something. Um, so for me, that was what my catalyst was for starting my own business. Yeah, and well we, done. Well, we Thank shot you. the film during COVID. Mm. And it actually, if it hadn't have been for COVID, we might not have got it made then. Because at the time, um, myself and Karen, the producer, were working towards um, Witch West, which was a period drama, but that all stopped you know, when the um, pandemic hit. Um, and then it gave us time to really sort of get love without walls up yeah. on its feet. And we managed, we, we shot for three weeks um, during COVID and thank goodness nobody. Oh, how, I feel like, how much are we allowed to tell him about the film? The story, which we haven't. Well, you missed out the synopsis. And then I was kind of thinking, hang on, how much is she yeah, not saying? No, exactly. Fine. Thank you, Shana. That's a really good <laughs> Our story is about homelessness. Oh. Well, there we go. Look, it's, it's going to go a yeah. whole other way now. Look. That, the, the, the base was, of it is yeah. homelessness. Yeah, the base of it. Mm. And that's how it all came about. Um, and that, that's where I think Jane's so fab because she hits on subjects that are so relevant. Things like HS2, for instance. When do you hear anyone? T- like, that's a real the issue. Cycle at the Highway? No. It's HS2. <laughs> What's HS2? Well, Jane, you need to cut this bit out. <laughs> Really? Everything Very. that just happened there was marvellous. Oh, God. But you do. <laughs> do you want to fill him in on HS2? Yeah. So Come on. Speed What's that? The train line. Which train line? The one that's been <laughs> messed up everybody's homes and land. And it's messed up all the roads. <laughs> <laughs> and that's wiped out half of Camden. No, I know nothing. Oh, my Zero. God. This is really interesting. So in 2010... Um, we got a knock on the door when we were living in Camden to say that they were going to demolish the whole area and knock down the whole estate for High Speed 2, which is a new train line yep. to go to well, Birmingham and beyond. Well, it ain't even reaching Camden, is it? And now we don't even know whether it's coming into Camden. Mm. And that was that was the sort of catalyst that made me get this script back out because I was just so angry mm. about what was going on that I was walking down Tottenham Court Road, literally stepping over people rough sleeping yeah. while up the road they're bulldozing and smashing these good you know homes mm. um so we moved out of camden because we got compulsory purchased and yeah so that was my that sort of fueled my fire to yeah. make this film this film's not about that but this film touches on homelessness the cost of living class aspirations grief <laughs> Mm. lots of things mm. there's a lot in there actually on the ser- on the when you actually start, start <coughs> digging um so you and louis got compulsory purchased yeah so no matter how happy or settled or at home you were you had to move we had to we fought it awful i mean they oh, yeah i can't yeah i mean i'm surprised i'm surprised you've not heard mm. of it it was consuming every inch of my being because i was thought we just don't have a voice. You always think, you know, you have a voice, but do we really? So that's why no. another reason why I wanted to, to put everything into the film because 
I thought it was a way of channeling my anger, but also things that I wanted to say that, you know, yeah. standing on the sidelines, blowing whistles, nobody was really listening. I made a film in 2013 and I, it was just like a documentary of three of my neighbours. One of them was a prisoner of war in a Japanese concentration camp. One, um, yeah, they were all sort of in their 80s and they'd lived there their whole life. And it, was just, it really breaks my heart to think that their last years of living there, they were surrounded oh. by cardboard boxes waiting and wondering mm. where they were going to go. How awful. It was, yeah, it's absolutely, it actually really really upsets me because mm. it's just so unnecessary and just ridiculous and it's unnecessary right in front of your eyes so yeah. it's even more frustrating isn't it yeah and then you know on one hand you've got people saying oh we've got no affordable homes we've got nowhere to house people we've got no money mm. but they find the money don't they well certain yeah. things the, the the world is in complete we were speaking briefly it's in complete turmoil now i mean it's yeah. like who who has a starting point of half a million pounds for a house? Mm. Uh, no, not a house, sorry, an apartment. Mm. Yeah. A two-bedroom apartment mm. that isn't actually big. So the houses, the apartments here start at half a million and they are smaller than, they're half the size of my council house that I would have been brought up in. The thing, when we lived in Camden, it was, and Lewis was born mm. in Camden, um, you know, People could be a little bit like, well, you know, you live in live in central London and da 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 da. But you know, there are people doing. Not everybody who lives in London is rich. No, you know, we're all struggling to survive, doing practical jobs. And there's this misconception that, well, you know, well, that's your fault if you. Yeah, there's some benefits London. to it, but okay. Um, Shall I tell you who else is in the film? Yeah, mm. um, we have Paul Barber. Okay. Only fools and horses. You see, I probably know him by the face. Denzel. Oh, he's brilliant, Denzel. Denzel. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> we have the amazing Sheila Reed, who is plays from Benidorm. Okay, I have the box set, but I never watched it. My sister said you must watch Benidorm. Yeah, well, the old lady. Oh yeah. yes, that's the one. We have the wonderful Ricky Harnett. I know Ricky who's Harnett, in the but the trailer of um, Rise of the Foot Soldier fame. Right, it, oh, that was a, a street met, gang thing, wasn't it? And many other films, 28 Days Later. We have, um, who else? oh, Adam Deacon. I know him. <gasps> He's from Anna's. He's from Anna's, yes. Um, and, and many other. Many others. Wonderful actors. Mm, I'm not au fait with no. actors' names, but I am very good at faces. Yes, so I'm sure there'll be a few you recognise in there. And also we have... Lou Macari, he has a little cameo as a oh, football, football, football player. Football legend. Yeah. So now I know them. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not a big football fan. I just was from that era. But why don't you tell him about <laughs> um, Lou's lovely charity? Because I think it's absolutely amazing yeah, what he's doing. So really the, cool idea. Yeah. So the reason why Lou, Lou Macari is involved in our film is he runs a charity in Stoke for people who are homeless. And it's absolutely incredible what he does. He's got this big warehouse and in it he has got almost like glamping pods. Yeah. So every person that stays there has their own room with their own number. And it's incredible. It's a brilliant charity. It's called the Macari Foundation. And it gives them every, it gives everybody a, a, an address then, yeah. doesn't it? So then everybody can then go into... Yeah, you can then go into the job centre and you can start applying for things because that's one of the main yeah. reasons that people are struggling, yeah. sleeping rough, is that you haven't got an address and you ain't got a postcode, so you can't sign on and you can't fill this form out. And so yeah. what Lou's done, I think, absolutely really hits the nail on the head and I can't believe that nobody's not thought of this before yeah, and brilliant. that we aren't sort of rushing this out and doing this at a bigger spam because it's such a simple thing of just giving yeah. people a front door and a pod that they can shut behind them with mm. a door number and a yeah. postcode and that just gives somebody so much Fantastic. more than what it is when you're just saying it. Yeah. yeah. The sad thing is it shouldn't be his responsibility. No, should it? it shouldn't. Well, it shouldn't be. No. It's like, you know, there's another amazing charity called uh, Vets on the S Dogs on the Streets. Um, and they go around London and they help people that are rough sleeping, but also help their um, animals, their dogs. Um, and, you sh yeah, I mean, they're really 
struggling at the moment because now they've got to have pay the Yulies and yeah. for their vehicles and stuff. And if, even though they're a charity and they're trying to, um, then they should be exempt from that, surely. You think, mm. but everything in this yeah. day and age is no, because difficult. Because they're helping people, and they sh- like you said, they shouldn't be having to do yeah. that. There should be like you, this Lou Macari thing. I mean. There needs to be a designated space. Mm. These people don't need brand new maisonettes and apartments. They need a place to build from the foundation yeah. up upwards. Mm. But people then see that they're getting something for nothing. Someone gets the hump because someone's getting something. You should be living on the street if you've got nothing. But no. then you would get bit. But it's a whole thing about the rich getting rich and the poor getting poorer. So then you're just sort of keeping a whole group of people down and keeping them further down and we're not mm. allowed to get back up and keep your head down. No, hang on, yeah, it's coming up. No, let's put back, push it back yeah. down yeah. again. Yeah. So where there's where is that fair? Where and who steps up to say, hang on, that isn't fair? Mm. Because I feel like for me personally, we're the little people and they've got so much to say and so much to yeah. Uh, such a big opinion about a lot of things, but actually, it doesn't really mean anything. No, you yeah. no, we're into the politics. There. Into the politics. No, realm I know, now. and it's really no. no, but it is. It's really difficult. Yeah. And when you sort of th- work on things like this with Jane, you know, I'm, yeah, you walk past people sit on the on the street, and it. But actually, after doing something like this with Jane, I look at it in a complete different way now. And we did scenes where we were sat on the pavement. I've never been sat on a pavement on a street and looked at the perspective from from people's feet. I've never yeah. done that. And it was a real game changer for me cuz like, well, hang on a second. This isn't this is real. This is going on a lot more than what we think it is. Yeah. Um so for me working on stuff like this, this just gives me the opportunity to look into it and research and find out myself and mm. you know, but there's like what we were saying the other day, it's 62% of the homeless are the invisible homeless, they're yeah. sofa surfing and they ain't getting the help and, you know, they're the ones that are really struggling and to, to keep themselves afloat. Yeah. But everything and just seems to be about putting people down. Yeah, and no and one's getting anywhere. All the obstacles, yeah. things that are supposed to be there to make our life easier, but actually just simple things now But that, you know, a cashless society. We've got, you know, mm. that whole scene in the film where, you know, Jana character goes in just to buy something you know with a few coins that she's got sorry we don't take cash card anymore. only mm. well, when i wrote that it wasn't like that i think i experienced that once in a restaurant um where they didn't take cash which i thought was really strange um but now it's the this norm is, this is the norm mm. yeah. and it, it's so easy to judge when we see people um on you know just the people that you see on this like the side of the road or on sleep rough sleeping but you know, everyone, there's a, and everyone's story is different, and mm. it's you know, every, there's a saying: you're only three paychecks mm. away. Three paychecks oh, absolutely! Away I was going like to that. say that, yeah. And you know, bad things happen, and just yeah, it's very easy. That's to what judge. really hit home for me when we did it is realizing actually, you know what? We all went that far away from becoming homeless no, or missing a rent or missing a payment or mm. somebody going. We're up in that. Like at the moment, we got a whole a hundred percent. There's a whole now thing going on where everyone's rents being put up and people are now in rent arrears. And then you find yourself and you think, "Hang on a sec, I've never been rent arrears." But then it's another step closer to becoming homeless and mm. rough sleeping. Oh yeah, yeah. A small chain of events. Oh, of course yeah. it is. So and easy. Yeah, so you easy. Split up with a partner or mm-hmm. your you. Know, Yes, yeah, so many, so many things. Mm. Um, and the thing that we see, I'm seeing more and more is the working poor. Mm. People who are working but are still yeah. struggling. Um, We're heading the way of America, which is really sad. I mean, you see often on these American programs that the person, they're getting told you don't work hard enough and they're working two jobs maybe, even three mm. jobs, to live not to f- progress, but mm-hmm. to survive week mm-hmm. to week. So the same here. If we're at that stage, we go to work so that we can improve. You want to know that I'll be able to buy a new car maybe if I save. But there is no savings. No, not this no is, uh, if we get this, we can still eat. Well, you can't even choose what you want to eat. This week we're going to have to eat down. We can't eat up. Mm. We're going to have to watch what we well, eat. It, or it's either eating or heating. Yeah. Mm. And that's like a major crisis at the moment. Like we're like we're in the UK and we people are having to make those decisions. Mm. Do we put money on our gas car and electric and the electricity or 
do we feed the kids? Yeah. Like, what an mm. awful predicament to be in. And we're mm. in the UK. Mm. Yeah. Like, that poverty really is absolutely ridiculous. Mm. And who's doing anything about it? Nobody. Doesn't seem that anyone's doing no. anything about it. No. Uh, it seems it was the so world. So hopefully, of- you know, when we have things like Love Without Walls, for me, I hope that opens up conversations with people that they've never really had before. And it goes, hang on a sec, whoa, mm. I yeah. didn't know this was going on. And then it's a whole conversation mm. that people are having that they never had before. Mm. Yeah. So the Love Without Walls, the title is The Walls of the House. You have Love Without yeah. the House. Is that what it's well, a metaphor yeah. for? Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a love story. Yeah. Which I, I love a good love story. Yeah. So. Yes. And the cinema, it, this is my, I am born and bred here. Mm. And that's my cinema as a kid. We'd all walk up to the, it wasn't called the Genesis. It was the ABC and then it was the Cornet. Or Coronet or Coronet. 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 So it was ABC always for me when I was a kid. And I went there and saw Bugsy Malone mm. and uh, The Land That Time Forgot and when I was a kid. I loved it. They had three cinemas. I'm not sure if they've still got the three. Louis said they have. I think there's, yeah, I think there's three screens. Yeah, there's yeah. one big one. Yeah. Then there's two tucked away underneath and what, they're both slightly different sizes, I think. Mm. It was fantastic. I used to. Yeah, it's a really lovely cinema. Um so I'm yeah, really excited that that's the sort of mm. premiere for the London. What's the, what's the connection for you then with the Genesis in terms of that? How um, do you know it? Well, I just, um, it's part of the London Independent Film Festival. Right. I mean, we've had, we screened uh, My Fur Heart there, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Um, but I haven't, it's not my local cinema, um, but it's one that I do go to yeah. a lot. So it's an independent, so and you're going to show in other independent so cinemas across it, London? No, so this is the London Independent Film Festival. So it's a whole pro. It, they've got like a week of films going on there, all yep. different films. And our film is the closing film of the festival. So it's the last film, which is amazing. And then from June the 9th, it will be in various cinemas across the UK right. and Ireland. Is it going to show in any of these small arty cinemas around Leicester Square? Possibly. We will find out sort of closer to the time where exactly, but we're hoping it's going to be, you know, in lots of places around the country. Because mm. I was remembering a film we watched in the Curzon. This, this, and it's this type of film the that you're doing. These are not um, Men in Black no. 17 or anything. Yeah. These are the lovely. Real, real films. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're not the type of films that you get a massive audience to get and go and see, are you? Even though they kind of deserve it sometimes, certainly. Well, I don't know. I mean, I think actually this film has universal well appeal. I think, yeah, I know what you mean. Is it going to have world release in some way then? Well, I hope so. I hope it's going to... Cans? Well, I don't know about Watch that. Watch the space. But, but yeah, well, I hope it will be shown Next step. in other countries. Yeah. Mm. Another thing, a bit of my ignorance. I mean, the producer I thought was the person who funded the film. No, the producer is the person who basically puts the whole thing together. Right, okay. So they're like, so our wonderful producer, Karen Newman, she, yeah, I mean, the job of a producer, I can't even explain what a producer yeah. does because they do, it's more like what they don't do. I mean, whereas, you know, if you're acting in the film, you might have rehearsed beforehand. Obviously, like, Shana's still involved because she's here promoting and talking about the film. But you've got other people that work on the film that might just come on just for, like, the, the days that they're shooting or yeah. whether it's the crew. But with producing and sort of directing as well, actually, you're sort of there from the conception yeah <laughs> all the way through to all the post-production um you know there is so much involved i mean karen and i've been working on this now for three years solid yeah and it still goes on i mean this morning she's ringing me up at nine o'clock we there's stuff that we need to sort out like we were sorting out the maps this week and mm. just yeah so many different and things. once it's over once the premiere is gone and everything else it's kind of reaches the the pinnacle of everything you've been working for and yeah, wow. but it's still ongoing. It never leaves you. This is why it's so important, I think, to do films that you really care about mm-hmm. because it is literally like having a child. Yeah. <laughs> well, but a very big child, a very big fat child. <laughs> yeah. Because there's all, you know, you yeah, after the cinema release, there's there's still stuff to do. I mean, it's a, yeah. that's what's beautiful. I love theatre. I absolutely love it. But, you know, you do a show, it ends, that's it. Yeah. But with the film, that film... For good or for bad, is there whatever? And we didn't mention the it used 
Tony Harrison, Anthony Harrison for the, was he stunts? <laughs> stunt. stunt double. So um, Tony Harrison was um, our knowledge boy that, Yep. Boy, Consultant. Boy? No, well, yeah, <laughs> knowledge person. Yeah, he's now a cabbie. Yep. Um, but he, yeah, he, you will see, if you see the trailer, yep. you'll see. Him okay, there. I will put the link to the trailer in yep. the podcast so they can yep. watch the trailer. It is an absolutely wonderful trailer. I am really looking yep. forward to seeing the film. Well, I, I hope for anyone who's doing the knowledge or all those cabbies out there i really hope that we've done you proud because i really wanted to show people what's involved in doing yeah. the knowledge do you have the um the cinema posters that they do yes we have cinema posters we've also got a um, vinyl album the soundtrack coming out in june as well when the release so that's being made at the moment so that features um, the songs that nile um has written for the um, yep. film as well as another our music supervisor um rob he's banned some velvet morning there's some songs from them in it as well another song so who wrote the songs so niall Ni- niall mcnamee who sings the, and the actor mm. yeah, wrote the song yes. mm. yeah, you're the, joking yeah he's the singer songwriter i always say it always makes me laugh because there was one scene and he'd written the song he was singing the song playing the guitar Acting and a piano, what is that? Fight all at once. He's Prince he's in the Revolution. <laughs> really? Can he get any more talent? Yeah. <laughs> is I mean, he bloody handsome as well? Yeah, he's a good looking boy. Oh, yeah. shit. I hate it when they got it all. So that, that would be coming out in June. Um, and Niall's got his own um, new album coming out as well. Is there a reason to go for vinyl? You're going for the classic look? or? Um, because we love it. Yep. My dad has a record mm, shop. Still has it. I, I, no, I my love. My dad has a shop. Selling a, records. Mm. Where, records. Where's his record shop? Um, Beehive Antiques, Battlesbridge. Battles, Battles Bridge, is that yeah. a village or something? It's near Chelmsford. Oh, okay. No, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only know what's on the map. I do. <laughs> what would be really interesting is when you've seen the film, yep. you might... Come back? We could always come back and then, because it's quite difficult to talk, mm. you know. Yes, you know what I mean? let's because, do that. I think. But, I mean, as I was saying, I mean, what would be amazing if... You know, if there's anyone out there that wants to come and watch the film, go and see it. Go and support it because this is a real proper British indie film. Look out for the film in and around London. Yes, thank you, Shana. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Jane. Um, It really is lovely and a really great project, and I am really, really uh, think what you've done is amazing. Um, Even though you've not seen it, yet. Well, I stood, I'm not, I, I, he's full did, of it, isn't he? No, no. Did I, did I mention that I saw the trailer before you yes. sent me the trailer? Yes, I, I don't know where. Where did you see it? It came on one of my feeds, and and I watched it honestly. And, and that, as I mentioned to you, the very first time I saw it, honestly, I was struck. I thought, oh, this is really, really good. Wow, spot on. Thank yeah. you, thank you. And I hope you go on to massive success. Um, become a very, very famous actress, and you have a very, very big house in Los Angeles, oh, and that you invite us you. to a party. <laughs> Watch this space. Yes, yes. Well, we'll all live next door to Joe. Because Joe's probably like <laughs> living it up now. And, oh, Joe probably lives in Dagenham, doesn't he, next to the fourth plant? <laughs> yeah, not that, not, not too far, to be honest. Yeah, I know that Stacey lives near Dagenham, or she did. Well, no, she is, a, she is a Dagenham girl, Stacey. So.